Aktung, the Vox of YouTube. It's me again, your pal Anani. It's been a little while, but we're finally back to explaining Victoria 2. Now, in the last few episodes, I talked mostly about the general strategy and tactics of the game, but I've kind of run out of things to say there. So, in between the beginner stuff and the more advanced stuff, which I'll be discussing later on, I'm going to be doing a small sub-series where I talk about the more specific strategy for various countries in the game, either because they're good countries to start out with, they are interesting in their own right, or I just need to explain a very important strategy for them that's not going to happen with too many of them, but if there so something needs said, it will be said. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Prussia. Prussia started out as two separate states, Old Prussia, a puppet state of Poland, and the Margravate of Brandenburg, holding Berlin and most of our capital states. Eventually, when the PLC started declining, Prussia became more freed and unified with Brandenburg, and after a series of wars under kings like Frederick the Great and Frederick Wilhelm III, became the modern, as represented in game, modern, state of Prussia. Now, as you can probably see, Prussia starts out in fifth place, it's one of the great powers, and another thing you could eventually gather out of it is that it has three major benefits. The first of which is that it starts out with the best army in all of continental Europe. I'm not even exaggerating there. You have so many troops that are so technologically advanced, experienced, and even more importantly, infused with engineers and artillery, that you are definitely a force to be reckoned with. However, this is added to by the fact that you have many of the North German states in your sphere of influence, which essentially, at one to two armies each, counts up an additional 30 to 40 units under your command in the end, which, though that doesn't sound like too much, does end up to be a big, big help in early game wars, especially if you go down one of the roads that I will mention later on. Another major benefit of Prussia is that it starts out with a good industrialized society. You have a lot of craftsmen by default, a lot of factories by default, just a lot of good things for an industrial rock bed by default. Especially if we look at the RGO, and you see, we've got a lot of coal, especially in the Rhineland, few bits of iron, which will be especially useful for more advanced constructions, and even with that, there are still a lot of places with grain, wood, and other basic necessities, which means that Prussia won't really have to import many of the agricultural things, especially considering that Austria, the Ottomans, Russia, and France are very largely agricultural. It will be very self-sustaining in that matter, while also being able to even go so far as to use canned food factories, uh, breweries, and wineries, taking advantage of its great farming areas. All in all, Prussia starts out with one of the best combinations of resources possible, and even for the things that you don't have, um, the various niche luxury resources, they can be very easily acquired from Yemen, or the Southeast Asian states, if you can beat Dem uh, the Netherlands or the UK, to annexing them and sphering them respectively. The third benefit is that it's in a very good position to form Prussia, or blah, form the German Empire. The thing about Prussia is that it already starts out with most of the North German states in its sphere of influence. While any of the North German states can form the country known as the North German Confederation, Prussia is the only country that's in a real istic position to be able to do so. Because mostly because it's a great power and you were required to sphere them, and most of these places are one region, which means that they cannot actually ascend to it. The major benefit of making the North German Feder Confederation is that all these states disappear and you, have, and you can stop worrying about Austria, France, or Russia taking them out of your sphere of influence, which way they will harass you by doing the entire game. The three states that you need to form the German Confederation off the get-go are Holstein, a satellite of Denmark, Hanover, 
a satellite of the UK, and Saxony in the sphere of Austria. The first and easiest state is Holstein, but there is a warning to go with it. As you see, it's a satellite of Denmark, which in almost every case is going to be the very first state you declare war on almost as soon as the ba game begins. In most cases, it's a better idea to sear Holstein before going after Denmark, especially if Austria is going after it. So, if you don't, it's a very long time to wait for the treaty to expire so you can actually start building influence again, because nations in a truce can't be influenced by you. And in addition, don't be like me the first time, because if... Holstein is a satellite, you cannot add a war goal to add it as a sphered country. You actually have to defeat Denmark, free them as a puppet, and wait for the truth to expire before you can start Spearman again. And even though that's the best you can do, and it doesn't really matter that much if you free them, except that if you do decide to just go against Denmark gung ho, I would recommend doing so as it gives you a large relationship both later on, and of course, if Denmark decides to go back for you, you don't have just a bunch of split forces. The second place that I would recommend sphering is Hanover, because even though they start in the sphere of the gigantic UK as a satellite, no less, with 200 relations, the only reason they're in such a predicament is that the king of the UK is still George IV of Hanover. Once he kicks it, uh... Victoria will shed the of Hanover title, and that will just destroy the relations with each other, and they'll stop being with England, stop being a satellite or in your or in their sphere, and start buddying up with you. The third and hardest state to actually get is Saxony. I would recommend if you're going to try and get it peacefully to start pumping all the influence you can at it from the game start, because if France decides to meddle meddle a lot in Austria's North German states' affairs. They will start freaking out over them and start throwing more influence at them, as well as trying to sphere S Switzerland, Sardinia, Piedmont, and of course France will try and sphere Baden and Württemberg over here, where there will be conflict starting up. However, the longer the games go, the less they get toned down, and if Italy forms by the time Saxony can be able to be gotten to, if Austria isn't friendly with them, it's going to be very, very difficult getting Saxony out of them without an outright war. So, you basically have two options. Either go completely berserker blitzkrieg on it, or actually fight a war over it. I wouldn't recommend the latter, actually. Because, if you want just Saxony, then that means that you're going to have to, uh, put infamy into it. If you want to just assert your hegemony from the start, that means you have a few more states to you have to take care of, that Austria will always be trying to get back, and if you don't have basically a direct line to forming the German Empire, it's just not a whole bunch of fun. An optional state that can go with the North German Confederation is Luxembourg over here, who is still counted as German, being part of the Holy Roman Empire's successor, the German Confederation. And, uh, while you can sphere it going into the North German Federation, I wouldn't recommend it. The thing about it is, I would recommend having it friendly and 100, right after you form the NGF, put it into your sphere. That won't annex it outright until you form Germany, but the thing is, you gotta fight France to form Germany, and mm, your main advantage from the NGF is that France only has one entry point to you, with a fort on it, unless they got Belgium sphered, which I'll talk about later. But once you get Luxembourg in there, that huge advantage goes completely to nil, having two places to worry about, and, uh, that's just, it's, it's not as good. I'd just not bother annexing it until the German Empire, if you're going to do so at all. As I said, it's completely optional, but recommended. Another oddity about forming Germany is that Prussia itself starts with a core here on Nukatel in Switzerland. The problem with that being that Nukatel is in the capital state of Switzerland, but the upside being that Sardinia Piedmont down here very often tries to attack Switzerland early in the game, and if France joins them, that's a truce themselves that they can't go with. So that opens up a very 
good possibility of being able to outright annex Switzerland if they're beat down enough. On the other hand, though, if you're going to uh, try and be a good guy, just take Nucatel and free the rest of Sweden behind or um, Switzerland behind it. I wouldn't recommend doing that because here's Nucatel and here's where your southern border is going to be. Notice a trend? None of the provinces are connected. If you have just Nucatel, it's just going to be an enclave in Switzerland facing France, which is basically suicide unless you want to go after French Comet in France, one of their highest value provinces. So, Nucatel is a good excuse to just outright annex Switzerland, which is in itself not that great of an idea. But if you really want it, uh, go for it quickly because. Around the 1860s, they have an event which makes you lose your core over it in exchange for a little bit of relationship with you. You lose your core, and you become more friendly. Figure that out. I'd be outraged, frankly, but that's still how it is. Lastly, for forming Germany, I'm going to talk about the various regions outside of Prussia that you need to attack. There is Schweizlig and Denmark. Also Lorraine and France. And that's it! That's the joke! There's not actually too many! Now the strategy for attacking Denmark is simple. Declare war and go. There's pretty much no more to it. As with real life, the Danes can't really put any viable threat up against you. So basically just be a steamroll all the way to Copenhagen. More accurately, it'll be a steamroll all the way to Alborg, because the one thing they do have over you is a navy, and that will actually tear you up pretty bad if you send your dinky three transport boats against it. Most strategies start out with going against Denmark, and you can see the reason why. First hand, Denmark is a very tiny state with very tiny population counts, but close to the border, there's a lot of North Germans. Even in uh, Jyland, there tends to be a few later on, which means that they're very friendly populations, that even if they're not converted to you, will quickly convert. Another thing is their colonies. Even at basic, you start out with Iceland, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands in one region, and that is a great place to attack the UK from. That'll actually make them have to think about declaring war on you, because it's, if they're human, I mean, because it's not just a continental Germany they have to worry about, it's also invasions from Iceland to Scotland, and that's going to be, that would be pretty devastating towards them, don't you think? Um, there's also St. Thomas, here in the Indies. While it's a less lucrative spot, it's still a good place to ransack some of Britain and France's colonies from, because, as with real life, they hardly ever keep any garrison on it. So if you capture it, you can use that as a base of operations against Spain, France, the UK, and the Netherlands, and of course, a base of operations against any South American state, but the only reason you should really be going after any close to it is uh, Panama. And since AHD, there's also Accra, here in Ghana, which is not only a good place if you're going to try and expand into Africa, being close to two very good, good and important regions, Togo and Ghana, but you also, as with most places owned by Denmark, you get a very straight shot at the UK's, Dutch, and French colonies. So that's why most strategies tend to go after Denmark first. Another potential strategy though, and this is the second road I mentioned, is going out on an all-out offense on Austria at the start of the game instead of Denmark. Now this is a lot more risky and it requires a lot more skill and a little more luck. Because, as previously mentioned, they have more powerful states than you at the beginning. Uh, not more states, uh, but Bavaria, Wittenberg, and Baden, Biden over there are definitely more powerful than your measly little one-army states in Dargania and, and Hessen. So they will very quickly make short of your North German states if you don't protect them very well, and that's going to be a very big downside, because at the beginning of the game, your most valuable armies are actually going to be of the minor German states. Another problem is, of course, the North Italian states, which will pretty much make a complete victory impossible, and if you're not watching, Tuscany and uh, 
even Modena, will sometimes, you know, grow a pair and actually assault Prussia navally by going around the Mediterranean and attacking uh, Brandenburg and Pomerania. And that's, while easily taken care of, your armies will probably be far away from them when they get there, and that could lead to some very bad things if you can't get to them fast enough. The main problem, though, is Austria itself. This is Austria. Not the sole pancreas, as in real life modern history, but this giant glob in the middle of Europe. It's going to be borderline impossible actually getting an assert hegemony, causes Bailey scene, without being the North German Federation, mostly due to the fact that most of your little states will give you massive amounts of negative war score and if they don't just outright quit out. Getting a whole 50 will basically mean you have to assault Vienna, which has no less than 40 troops in it at basically all times, survive any Austrian assault through the north of uh, Czechoslovakia, and actually continue to keep fighting them off and, and even going on many offenses, and that's going to be pretty bad for you. If you're completely crazy, like some people on the good old Paradox forums, one of the strategies there is to try and free Hungary from Austria, which will try in, which is an attempt to try and drop it out of great power status. You can actually annex Austria if they're not a great power, as what happened in uh, 1938. However, you still will have rebels to deal with. You won't get any North Ger uh, not North German, but you won't get any German Empire corps on any of their former territory. And most importantly, if you're missing Hungary and especially the Romanian states, it's not all that worth it. Having a port in the Gulf of Venice doesn't matter that much when you're a completely non-naval power, and it gives you the Ottomans to contend against and a huge, huge border facing Russia. If you're going to be incredibly hyper-militant with uh, what we will discuss later, then it is, I guess, an acceptable strategy, but really, forming Kleindeutschland with just the required provinces is a lot more conventional. The last place you'll need to assault to form Germany is France for these three little provinces right here, which weren't even considered cores provinces in real life when they actually took them. Much less in, like, 1836. But I digress. Elsa Serene is going to be one of the harder things to get to. Even though France only requires a measly 12 war score for them, the problem is you're fighting France. They have two major boons. The first is that they have a shit ton of conscripts. Their population is very high, being the only HM's government on continental Europe, and if the uh, Third Revolution, or um, if the Third Republic event fires for them through mod, or they just fall to it through rebels, which will happen a lot, they will become the only republic on mainland Europe, besides a very select few, and the only major power republic besides the United States. That will put a big thorn in your side, as even though your units will be far superior, there's not very much uh, 36 guards can do against 360 French conscripts, no matter how little organization they have. They have to have basically borderline none to instantly lose as per when they build units proper while you're occupying territory, and what that'll amount to is they'll just hold them back for three days in an assault, and they'll stomp you if you're not prepared for it. They also tend to blob, and they have a big trump card in Belgium. Now, as I mentioned, North Germany's main high point is that they have only one method of entry from France, and that's why I mentioned don't annex Luxembourg earlier. France will have to go through this one little territory and start occupying like crazy. Most, But they can't really even do that if you've got any guards there, because look, a fort! So, there's just not too many provinces here, they're not very high value, and there's only one way in. Overall, that's a really, really big strategic advantage for you, if you can bottleneck them well enough. Problem is, though, they tend to sphere Belgium and the Netherlands, something that we'll talk about in a uh, bit here, with... and that'll give them all the time, 24-7 military access. That's a lot more entry points to North Germany than just the one. So, now, with that being said, that's a good segue into 
the other states that you could consider sphering to fight all these wars. The first and most obvious state that you probably want to end up sphering is the Netherlands, which is a very good ally to have in most circumstances, and while not completely uh, needed, it's, it's, it will help you a lot if you have a mere sphere. Even though it will give you more entry points if Belgium goes to France, or especially if they capture it, um, it'll be... They'll be... They'll have to capture the Dutch territory. It'll be enemy territory instead of being friendly. I mean, they can still go through it, but they'll take attrition losses and all kinds of bad stuff. Essentially, uh, if they have the Netherlands, or if they have Belgium, it's going to be worse than if you could keep Belgium out, but better if Belgium went to them. Speaking of which, Belgium. Belgium, uh... Though it starts in the sphere of influence of the United Kingdom, will usually go to France pretty quickly, and that's one of the worst things that can happen for reasons mentioned earlier. If you're going to try and go for Belgium, I wouldn't recommend trying to sphere it outright, because that's pretty much impossible with everyone who wants a piece of it. What I would instead recommend is just trying to get to friendly and keep it out of France's sphere. While the UK may not find that very entertaining, it is certainly better having them under them than under France, because, you know, more hostile territory equals not as good. So with all that said, let's talk about national focuses and your starting technologies. This is going to be the uh, ending point of the video here, so keep close. Keep close listening, because one of the most important parts. I would recommend using soldiers in Berlin due to the fact that they have a pretty high population that can largely sustain itself even with the added uh, with the added national focus, which will basically mean that eventually, even if you just have Berlin's provinces uh, pumping out soldiers for you, you will have one of the largest in the world just from your sheer population, and you won't even have to worry too much about changing it up constantly like in most smaller states due to the fact that the population is, as mentioned, so sufficient. In slicing down here, I would recommend encouraging officers, but it can also be used for any other secondary causes, uh, national focus you like. Officers is recommended because it is the second highest count province, and it's just overall a good place to have officers coming in, because that's another thing good for Prussia is officers, you know, anything militancy helps, and having a lot of them to control a lot of troops equals good. More troops, more officers, it just, you know... It's ju it's just all good. All good for you. An optional thing, if you're going for absolute industrialization, is putting your secondary causes, pff, secondary national focus, in the Rhineland, in Nordrhein, Westphalen, or the Rhineland proper, because they are very highly industrious areas, as mentioned. Look at all that, and they even start out with railroads in Düsseldorf. All very good things for you. So, that's Prussia. There are some other things that I could talk about, such as what to do to assaulting Russia, but if the response is overwhelming for that, I will talk about that. But that's all you need to know for starting out as Prussia. So, Gott nicht du, and go reunify the German states.